We are watching a lot of towns and a lot of polling places tonight. And John, one of the things that I'm very curious to see is how Western New Hampshire comes out in terms of the governor's race and Andrew Valinsky. That was definitely Bernie Sanders territory in that presidential primary in February. The big question mark, can he resurrect that kind of progressive coalition in this race? Yeah, I think that uh, they've certainly been working on that. Uh, Bernie has given him his endorsement. Uh, that's going to be a place where Andrew Valinsky is going to have to do well if he if he hopes to uh, pull off what would be considered a, somewhat of an upset in this, given the fact that Dan Feltis has outspent him three to one, four to one on, on television and uh, has a lot of the establishment uh, endorsements. So we'll be looking also, of course, around Concord, where they both are from. That would be very interesting as well. Uh, Valinsky has uh, the, youth move, the youth movement behind him. Uh, he's way ahead in terms of the 18 to 34 grouping, but uh, Feltus is way ahead on the little bit older grouping, middle age, 35 to 49. So uh, it's a key area, Adam, no doubt about that. One of the uh, votes we get in first is Manchester, of course. Ward 1, always a little bit of a bellwether for Democrats. Right. Molly Kelly crushed that ward in 2018. It'll be interesting to see early if that's competitive. We could be in for a very long night. Okay, let's move on to the Senate race between Don Boldick and Corky Messner. In this one, John, I think Gene Shaheen sent out a blast fundraising email today referring to Corky Messner as our opponent. Race isn't right. over yet. She's already looking ahead, though. Yeah, and that's not the first time she's done that. Uh, she, they, have, she, they have made reference to Corky Mesner as their opponent in the past. Uh, the conventional wisdom says that he should be her opponent, but conventional wisdom doesn't always work out in New Hampshire. Obviously, Corky Mesner has the endorsement of the president, uh, but while a lot of Republicans, uh, of course, like President Trump, uh, they may not always listen. National endorsements don't always hold up well in New Hampshire, but in this case, uh, Mesner, with his vast fundraising and self-funding, I should say, uh, and lead in that area, being on television, television advertising, uh, he would have to be going into this race uh, as, as the favorite. And you certainly can't overstate the impact that Corey Lewandowski had on this race early on. Of course, one of exactly. President Trump's trusted confidants thought about entering this race, and when he didn't get in, uh, that put the advantage very firmly with someone, a self-funder like Corky Mesner. So it would be an upset tonight for Bullock. It was, was the funding that, that um, moved that uh, endorsement to Mesner. And let's take a look at the congressional races, John. In the first district, obviously, there's a Trump endorsement there for Matt Mowers. That's expected to make a big difference. Yeah, again, we have this almost a mini uh, Senate primary here. Uh, here you have uh, two uh, people, one, two people seeking office for the first time. Matt Mayberry is a known entity in, among uh, the rank and file GOP activists. Matt Mowers has come in and has been a quite a uh, uh, kind of a whirlwind in terms of getting the Trump endorsement and a lot of fundraising. Uh, in the second district, you have. Uh, Someone who was, was a nominee, Steve Negron, last time. But uh, any, all bets are off uh, when, in that district, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, right. I mean, it's a pandemic year. Uh, it feels like there are more unknowns than ever. John DeStaso, thank you for your insight. There's thank a you. lot to watch tonight. And, of course, we'll be keeping an eye on it. Tom and Jen, back to you.